Hey guys, it's Sam from DIY Huntress and today I'm going to show you how I made this resin and wood hair comb or beard comb in my workshop with my best friend Alicia. Let's get started. This project is part of Home Depot's prospective program. Last time Alicia and I collaborated, we went all the way to the West Coast to visit our friend Chris in California. So it only made sense that we did kind of a cross country trip and she come visit me in my shed shop all the way on the East Coast in New York. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Now Alicia had never done an epoxy resin project before and I have tons of funky lumber laying around because I'm a lumber hoarder. So we decided to collaborate on a resin and wood hair comb that we'll be gifting to a friend who you'll be meeting in a couple of weeks. All right, so we'll run it through the planer first, right? Because it has one flat edge, like this side is done. Okay, let's get flat and take a look. See how it looks? Yep, and then we'll uh, figure out how we're gonna divvy this up. Fight over the <laughs> pieces. I get the good one. And then, one. Oh. Let's do this. So after some brainstorming and of course some snacks, we first decided to start by running the piece through the surface planer. And we did this because the piece was just a little thick to be used as a comb and we wanted a good amount of surface area to use that was already flat. After running it through the planer, we then set it down on a piece of foam and used the track saw to cut it into some smaller strips. Now the reason we used the track saw instead of the table saw or the miter saw was because this was just a safer way. You could use a circular saw with a guide to cut a piece just like this in your own shop if you don't have a track saw. And once the pieces were all cut up into smaller sizes, it was time to fight over who wanted what. Turkey leg. When you get a turkey leg, how big are they? They're like this big, right? Yeah. They keep me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so which one do you want? I don't know, like, I think I'm making my life really hard, but like, I'm so stuck on you want this. this. Yeah. If you took out this center part right. and used that, even, would that be would cool be so somehow. cool. Okay, so then the other thing is, it would be cool to play around with like a couple different designs. So I definitely want to do that as one. So I'm going to clean cool. that. I have two I want. I want okay. this okay. little piece. Okay. And then I think I want this, let's map this out. transition, this like, let's transition map. piece right okay. there. So, so here, this. You cool with that? Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, let me try. Okay, good. we're good. And after dividing and conquering, I brought the pieces over to the miter saw and just cut them all down to size based on what we wanted to use. I then handed each piece off to Alicia who ran them through the table saw and cut them down to their final width. Next it was time to prep our molds and I picked up a couple of melamine shelves for a few dollars at Home Depot and began to just take each piece and mark a rough estimate of where they needed to be cut. Now a good rule of thumb for the height of your molds is that if you mark how tall your piece is on the melamine board and then you bring them over to the table saw and cut them about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch taller, it gives you room for some runover when you're pouring your epoxy later. But basically once all of the side pieces were cut, it was then time to lay out all of the bottom pieces as well and we just did this by lining up our pieces on the melamine boards, marking where we wanted them cut and then taking them over to the table saw and cutting them down to size. We also used the miter saw for any cross cuts or small pieces to make sure that everything was aligned and that we were being safe. Next we started rough laying out all of the pieces and labeling where each one went and then we started taping them up to prepare for the resin pour. I probably explained this process a lot better in my resin and wood key holder project but basically by using the tape this will stop the resin from sticking to the melamine and allow us to pull it away from the mold a lot easier later on. Following the tape we began to pre-drill and drill all of our molds together and this is about the time where I wish they could keep Alicia forever because it was so easy to have one person pre-drill and the other person insert the screws and we just went back and forth and did this while BSing and catching up and just loving time together in the shop. Next it was time to clean and prep the wood for the epoxy pour and this cordless Ryobi rotary toolkit that I was given as part of Home Depot's prospective program was literally perfect for the job. I just stuck a battery in it, chose which bit that I wanted to use, and then attached it to the rotary handle and used it to wipe away any of the excess bark and grit that was left over on the wood that I wanted to use for my epoxy pours. Now I've only really done a couple of small epoxy resin projects, but one thing I've learned is that the cleaner the wood is, the better the pour is, and the less bubbles you get, so I really spent some time here making sure that all the lumber I was using was prepped properly. But after prepping the wood, it was time to continue prepping the molds, and we did this by first vacuuming out any of the extra debris, and then using a silicone caulking to create a bead along the seams so that the resin will not leak out of the mold later. 
I really feel like we're about to show <laughs> Draw. Like we were teammates before this. <laughs> now it's a challenge. Now it's a challenge. Okay. Now we're dueling. <laughs> Let the games begin. <laughs> After deciding that from here on out it was every lady for herself, we started to place our wood pieces into our molds and prep them for our pour. Now one thing that you guys had recommended on my last resin pour video was to use some epoxy to seal the wood before pouring and that's exactly what we did. So we used some 5 minute epoxy and rubbed it into the live edge seams and this is going to help prevent bubbles from forming later on in the process. Next we mixed up our own batches of deep pour epoxy which I had left over from some other projects and then after mixing them thoroughly divided them into smaller cups cups where we then use different color metallic pigments in these cups to create different color combinations. Now I've only ever poured one color epoxy in my epoxy resin project so it was really fun to get to experiment with some different colors on this one. Not gonna lie it was also really fun to watch Alicia mix her colors and start her first pour as well because there's something really cool about playing with epoxy resin and I was so happy that I got to experience that with her during her first pour. After our colors were mixed it was time to start the pour and one thing I've learned in my other projects is that when you are clamping down your pieces to tape the clamp so that the resin does not stick to the rubber portion of the clamp. And after clamping everything down, I then began to pour my random collection of colors into my molds. And a little trick that I learned in my key holder project, which I still love, is I used a little bit of rubbing alcohol inside of the epoxy and allowed it to make this cool explosion of color and then used a screw just to mix things up as it cured. At this point, I also realized that the five minute epoxy created a pretty tight bond between the piece and the mold. So I removed the clamps and just added more epoxy resin. I then continued to experiment with the rest of my colors and the rest of my pieces. And I had a lot of fun doing this. So one thing that I didn't get a chance to show on camera and wanted to tell you guys about about is that when you're using metallic pigment it can often sink to the bottom of the mold so throughout the curing process at least for the first couple of hours it is kind of fun to go back and just mix up the pigments a little bit add some more rubbing alcohol and kind of see what effect or colors that you get shortly after pouring alicia and i went on a little bit of a field trip to collaborate with another maker and we'll be sharing all about that field trip on our channels very soon so make sure to subscribe but when we returned to my shed shop, our wood and resin pieces were ready to remove from the molds and we did exactly that. We took all of the screws out of the pieces and then just used a chisel to knock away the mold from any stubborn places that were stuck to the resin. Sadly, after demolding our pieces, Alicia had to leave me and I was left with this. Vomit. This one looks like vomit. I'm sorry. It just does. We don't make mistakes, friends. We make happy accidents. Instead of wallowing the fact that my resin piece did not turn out the way I wanted it to, I decided it was time to flatten them by running them through the planer. And a little trick that Alicia has taught me is if you use painter's tape and CA glue, you're able to attach your piece to a longer piece or a sled without damaging the piece or the sled itself. So that's exactly what I did. I attached the piece of resin to a longer piece that would fit through my planer without getting stuck and I then decided to run that through the planer a couple of times until I was able to get a flat design that was about the thickness of a comb. I then just ran a wet rag over the designs to see exactly what I was working with. And after all that it came out so cool. Next, I brought each of the pieces over to my belt sander and began to sand them down to their final width and tapering them a bit so that they did look more like combs than just average squares. I then brought them over to my miter saw and began to cut them down to their final dimensions. Now, if your piece is too small to use at the miter saw comfortably, a little trick that I have is using a scrap piece of wood and then clamping it down to provide enough pressure on the piece that you are cutting so that your fingers don't have to be close to the blade. Next, it was time to lay out my designs and to make my life easier, I actually decided to print a couple of different templates off the internet of different types of shapes of combs that I really liked. And once I was happy with the layout and the design and the shape, I then used some spray adhesive to attach the stencil to the piece. After allowing the stencil to dry, I brought them over to my scroll saw and began to cut out the designs. If you don't have a scroll saw, a band saw works here as well. I did want to try the jigsaw, but I was afraid that it might be too aggressive and break the piece, so I didn't try that. But if you have success with a jigsaw, I'd love to know, so please let me know in the comments. But in any event, I just carefully cut out as much material as I could using my scroll saw, and I didn't worry too much about it being perfect because I'm going to be sanding it and shaping it later using the same rotary tool that I used earlier in the process. Now, once I was done, I did try to peel the stencil away from the piece and there was a lot left over, so I just brought it over to my sander and carefully sanded away any of the leftover paper. 
As promised, in comes that rotary tool that I mentioned earlier, and I basically just use a small engraving bit here to just shape the inside of the comb teeth. Not gonna lie, this process was a little tedious, but I would have rather have done this than to use a drill bit or try to get those little nooks and crannies with the scroll saw because I'm not the best at the scroll saw and this just made my life so much easier. But my best advice here is to get comfortable because it did take a long time. Time to bring in the big guns. Yeah, I wasn't kidding about getting comfortable. I literally brought a chair into my workshop for the rest of this project. And basically, I just continued to use the engraving tool and then switched off between various different sanding tools as well to just sand everything down to its final shape. Now, as much as I wish that things were smooth sailing, I did run into a pretty major snag right about here. This is not good. This is really flimsy. So I think that I actually either planed this or sanded it too thin because now everything is like all... And I just broke it off. Crap. Okay. Yeah, they're all... Oh. I could glue them back on, but they're... this is like so flimsy that I don't think that it's even going to be a comb that can be used by anyone. So, unfortunately, I think we're going to have to scrap this one. I have two other beautiful ones, and it is what it is. So, now I know. Next time I do a project like this, make sure that I plane this a little thicker. Instead of crying over spilt milk or a dead vomit comb, I just continued to shape the other two combs that I had and ran them through my gross knotty hair and they survived through my gross knotty hair so I decided that they were good to go. I then began the final sanding process for the two remaining combs and I did this by sanding all the way to 400 grit and then wet sanding the piece at 400 grit as well in order to polish the resin. And then after letting both of the pieces dry completely, it was time to seal them and I did this by pretty much dipping them in an oil bath with oils that were safe for skin or FDA approved or things that were okay to touch human hair really. It was then time to let them dry and then admire my handiwork. So although I'm pretty bummed about that vomit comb, I am really happy with the two remaining combs that I have. They're beautiful and they're functional and it was really fun to get to make them with my best friend in my own workshop. Now I haven't seen Alicia's combs either so I'm going to go head over to her channel and check them out and I do hope that you guys do the same because I'm sure that they are 10 times more beautiful than mine because she's just so freaking talented. But like I said earlier, she will be back on my channel in a couple of weeks for another cool collaboration so make sure to come back and check that out. But in the meantime, I hope you guys will subscribe for more projects in the future. Thank you as always for watching and happy DIYing.